Let's see. A little donut for me. Grandpa, I know you like jigsaw puzzles, but what's the most challenging puzzle you ever tried to assemble? Hmm, well, the most perplexing puzzle ever seen for me it has to be the Eternity 2 puzzle. Yes, 15 years ago, I embarked on a journey to solve it, fueled by the competition of a $2 million prize. Do you know how many donuts I could have bought with $2 million? Um, so many. So many. Yes, no, but despite its seemingly manageable 256 pieces, the puzzle remains unsolved to this day. I came close to cracking it, but was left with seven pieces that refused to find their rightful places. Okay, uh, well, what about the largest puzzle humans ever tried, then? Hmm. Well, the grandest puzzle to ever be pieced together is the human genome. Boom! Blew your mind there, huh? Well, actually, I you already... You see, the first attempt to okay. assemble it for millions of short genomic fragments in 2001 left us with thousands of gaps, just like my seven holes in my eternity, too. No, Grandpa, don't... Let me finish. Bye. You see, fast forward two decades to 2022, brilliant computer scientists have finally assembled the complete human genome. Well, but Grandpa, how on earth is genome sequencing relating to assembling puzzles? Well, it's truly remarkable, dear, and a lot closer to puzzle solving than you might think. But to explain all of it, I'm going to have to transition to a mysterious slideshow in my very, oh, very smart no, science voice show. one second. No, Grandpa, <laughs> no, please, no, not again! Now picture a genome as a long string composed of four nucleotides, A, C, G, and T. As the first approximation, you can think of your genome as a three billion nucleotide long string. Biologists still have not figured out how to read the genome from the first to the last letter like we read a book. Instead, they shatter the genome into millions of small pieces and try to assemble them into contiguous chromosomes. Note, do not do this with an actual book. They will get mad and hypothetically will kick you out of the San Diego County Book Fair, but I'm over it. Let's get back to the puzzles. Now, in the genome assembly problem, the goal is to assemble a genome from a collection of its short, overlapping fragments called reads, not unlike assembling jigsaw puzzles. To illustrate, here are five identical copies of a mini-genome and a set of reads extracted from each copy. Note that some fragments from each copy are lost during genome shattering, making the assembly problem even more intricate. And just like the random order in which jigsaw pieces are handed to us, the reads are also given in a random order, Puzzles can be pretty random. Our goal is to reconstruct a genome from these reads. This is how a solution of the genome assembly for this toy example may look like. Grandpa, I'm gonna stop you right there. How have computer scientists managed to solve this million piece puzzle, but failed to solve Eternity 2 with only 256 pieces so far? That's like, so many less pieces. Well, it's a fascinating story, my dear. Would you believe that the key idea of genome assembly dates back to the seven bridges of Konigsberg puzzle from three centuries ago? Grandpa, if there's one thing you know about me, it's I love me an ancient puzzle, so I am all ears. Can you explain how an ancient puzzle helps in genome assembly? Okay. But first, can you tell me what is in common between these three puzzles? In the one-stroke puzzle, the goal is to trace each segment in the given figure exactly once without lifting your pencil. It turns out that the one-stroke puzzle can be solved for the left figure, but cannot be solved for the right figure. Can you figure out what is the key difference between these two puzzles? And how would you solve the one-stroke puzzle for figures with millions of segments? In the snowplow puzzle, you need to find the shortest route for a snow truck to clean every city block and return to its original location. Note that in this problem, the truck may need to visit the same block more than once. You need to find a route visiting the minimum number of blocks. The shown route visits 34 blocks in the city with only 24 blocks. 
can you find an even shorter snowplow route or prove that the shown route is optimal? And how would you solve the snowplow puzzle for New York City with a whopping 120,000 city blocks, not to mention some very angry New Yorkers if their snow's not plowed? In the universal string puzzle, the goal is to find a string that contains each binary string of length k as a substring exactly once. Here is a string that solves the universal string puzzle for k equals 3, because it contains each binary string of length 3 exactly once. Can you solve the universal string puzzle for k equals 10? You're probably wondering why we used the DNA logo for the universal string puzzle. It turned out that the algorithms for this problem are quite similar to the algorithms that biologists use for genome assembly. Plus, it looked pretty cool. In this video, we will be designing algorithms for solving these three seemingly different puzzles using the same algorithmic idea. Perhaps you have already tried to solve the one-stroke puzzles as a kid, as they often appear at various websites. It turns out that there is a simple rule that allows you to quickly decide whether you can draw a figure without ever lifting a pencil. An algorithm for actually drawing the figure with one stroke is more complex, but you will learn it by the end of this video. For example, it will take you just a few seconds to decide whether the one-stroke puzzle is solvable for these figures. Here are the solutions of the one-stroke puzzles for various figures. You may want to pause the video and think about a condition that defines whether the one-stroke puzzles can be solved or not. In the next video, we will focus on a variant of the snowplow puzzle for a grid-like city and learn how to find the shortest truck route even through a city with millions of blocks. And now, my dear grandchild, just to check that you are still awake, can you see the similarity between the universal string puzzle and the genome assembly? Oh, Grandpa! I am very much interested, but I don't see how these two problems can be similar. Well, do you see this similarity now? Oh, now I see some similarities, and I want to learn more. Well, good for you, you weird math grandchild. Then meet Leonard Euler one of the world's greatest mathematicians who lived three centuries ago, and also, may I mention, an absolute fashion king. I mean, look at that hat. He knew nothing about our three puzzles, let alone genome assembly. Instead, he was interested in the seven bridges of Konigsberg problem and solved it. Euler's idea is the key to both assembling genomes and solving our three puzzles. In the 18th century, Konigsberg consisted of four parts connected by seven bridges. The seven bridges of Konigsberg puzzle asks you to find a walk through Konigsberg that visits each bridge exactly once. This is how such a walk could look like. Starting at the northern point, we visit bridges one by one. By the end of the day, we end up on the eastern part after visiting six out of seven bridges. We missed one bridge and we cannot traverse it without visiting some other bridges again thus failing to solve the seven bridges of Konigsberg puzzle. You know what they say? The grass is always greener on that one Konigsberg bridge that you never manage to visit. But our failure does not imply that the puzzle has no solution. Indeed, maybe there is a better strategy that results in a walk visiting each bridge exactly once. Pause the video and try our interactive puzzle. To show you the solution, we will transform Konigsberg with four parts and seven bridges into a graph with four nodes and seven edges. Each part corresponds to a node in the graph, and each bridge corresponds to an edge connecting two nodes. Afterwards, we remove the map of the city and the bridges. What is left is a simple one-stroke puzzle represented as a graph. Euler laid the foundations of graph theory by finding an approach that solves this puzzle for arbitrarily large graphs. Um, Grandpa, what is a graph? I, I mean, I know what a graph is, but, um, you know, asking for a friend. Well, a graph is a collection of nodes and edges between them. This graph has seven nodes and 12 edges between them. The degree of a node is defined as the number of edges incident to this node. For example, the left node has two edges incident to it, 
so its degree is 2. We now show the degree of all nodes. Note that all nodes in this graph have even degrees. We classify such nodes as even nodes. A cycle in a graph is called Eulerian if it visits every edge exactly once. Recall that a cycle must start and end at the same node. A graph is called Eulerian if it has an Eulerian cycle. This toy example reveals that all nodes of an Eulerian graph are even. Indeed, for each node, the number of times an Eulerian cycle enter it is equal to the number of times it leaves it. We say that a graph is balanced if all of its nodes are even. We just proved that each Eulerian graph is balanced. But is it true that each connected balanced graph is Eulerian? Euler proved that this is indeed the case. A connected graph is Eulerian if and only if it is balanced. We will now recruit an ant to prove that a connected balanced graph has an Eulerian cycle. Grandpa, where'd you get that ant? Don't worry about it. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm an ant over here. Cool, thanks ant. Let an ant randomly walk through the graph without visiting the same edge twice. If an ant was a genius, it would just construct an Eulerian cycle in a single walk. Yay, look at me, I'm a genius ant. Now, uh, can I go home please? Just one second, ant. A less intelligent ant would randomly choose a node and start walking. This is a good point to pause the video to think whether the ant can get stuck. The ant can only get stuck at the starting node because, since all nodes are even, there is a way out of each other node that the ant enters. The ant has completed a cycle, but has not proved Euler's theorem yet. The constructed cycle is not Eulerian. Can you instruct the ant to traverse the graph differently to enlarge this initial cycle? Let's start at a node with still unexplored edges and traverse the constructed cycle starting from this new node. Then, after traversing this cycle, the ant will end up in a node with still unexplored edges and will be able to continue the walk. We will thus enlarge the original cycle. Wait a minute, why should I start at a different node? What difference does it make? What's the point of all of this? Select a node that has an unused edge. Starting from this node, traverse the already constructed cycle and return back to the starting node. Hey, why do you want me to start walking along the same cycle again? Can't I see something new instead? Every day it's the same Konigberg bridge, whatever is the same crumped- Oh! Oh, I see now. I returned back, but I can continue walking, okay? Exactly, Ant. After completing the cycle, start random exploration of still untraversed edges in the graph. Stuck again! No Eulerian cycle yet. Can we enlarge the green-blue cycle by traversing it starting from a new node? Which one? Stop and think. Which node to choose? Again, the ant should choose a node with still yet unused edges. For example, this one. Starting at a new node, again, I still do not understand why I'm traversing the same cycle again. I returned back, but... but Oh, I can continue walking again. Maybe these instructions were not that foolish. Well, I have now visited all edges and thus proved Euler's theorem. <laughs> not bad for an ant. Now, uh, seriously, mister, can I go home? Just a little more, big guy. We now know how to find an Eulerian cycle. But how can we find an Eulerian path that does not require the ant to return back to the starting node? The one-stroke puzzle is equivalent to the Eulerian path rather than the Eulerian cycle problem. It turns out that a graph has an Eulerian path if and only if it is either balanced or has two odd nodes. Here is the proof. Assume that there are two odd nodes. By joining them by a virtual edge, we get an Eulerian graph. Let's start traversing an Eulerian cycle starting from the virtual edge. Now we traverse the rest of the cycle. By removing the virtual edge, we get an Eulerian path between two nodes of odd degree that starts at the second edge and ends at the last edge of the constructed Eulerian cycle. Our ant proved the Euler theorem for undirected graphs. 
Now, teach the same ant to prove the Euler theorem for directed graphs. It turned out to be easy. A directed graph is balanced if the in degree of each node in this graph equals its out degree. Euler theorem for directed graphs states that a strongly connected directed graph is Eulerian if and only if it is balanced. Here is an example of an Eulerian cycle. Now, back to the graph for seven bridges of Konigsberg puzzle. I know you missed this one. Since every node in this graph has an odd degree, there is no walk through Konigsberg visiting every bridge exactly once. In Python, to find an Eulerian cycle of a graph, one can first construct a graph by passing the list of edges, and then call a built-in method. Now, let's get back to the one-stroke puzzle. We represent each figure as a graph, and mark odd degree nodes in red. A figure can be drawn without lifting a pencil if it has zero or two odd nodes. Thus, to check whether one-stroke puzzle can be solved, you just need to count the number of nodes of odd degree. Now we get back to our snowplow puzzle. Recall that the goal in this problem is to visit every city block at least once while minimizing the number of visited blocks. Consider the grid graph for the snowplow puzzle. There are eight nodes of odd degree in this non-Eulerian graph. Since the snowplow has to return to its original position, it traverses an Eulerian cycle in a graph where each edge that is traversed n times are substituted by n parallel edges. Thus, our goal is to turn the grid graph into Eulerian by adding as few such edges as possible for the 3 by 3 grid. The best way is to add four edges. Each added edge indicates that the snowplow will traverse a city block more than once. The resulting graph is Eulerian. The number of edges in the resulting graph is 28, and this is exactly the length of the optimal snow plow route. Now, we show the corresponding walk of length 28. Interestingly, there is also a built-in Python method that allows one to turn a non-Eulerian graph into Eulerian by adding the minimum number of additional parallel edges to the existing edges of the graph. As in our example, it first identifies nodes of odd degree in a graph and then joins them by paths of minimal length to make the graph Eulerian. This leads to four-line Python code for solving the snowplow puzzle. For the 4x4 four four grid, it constructs the following solution. The method starts by identifying the nodes of odd degree. It then adds the following edges to make the graph balanced. The resulting graph has 48 edges and has an Eulerian cycle, so the optimal root length is 48. Now we show the corresponding walk of length 48. We saw how to solve the one-stroke puzzle using Euler's theorem, but how would you solve the universal string puzzle? For simplicity, we will focus on the circular version of the universal string puzzle, constructing a circular string that contains each binary k-mer as a substring exactly once. Below, we show the answer for k equal to 2 and 3. We now show how to find the shortest circular string, containing all binary formers as substrings. To this end, we create a graph whose nodes are all binary 3-mers. Then, each former is represented as an edge from its prefix to its suffix in this graph. We can now hide the edge labels. It turns out that this graph is Eulerian, and its Eulerian cycle spells a universal string. We leave it to you as an exercise. Congratulations! You have now learned how to solve three different algorithmic puzzles, all based on the same Seven Bridges of Konigsberg puzzle. Now, this puzzle is not as old as the Josephus problem that we encountered in our Computer Science Meets Ancient History edition of the Ace Your Next Coding Interview by Learning Algorithm series. However, well, there is something about this puzzle that makes it unique. Indeed, puzzles, as fun as they can be, are not necessarily useful for solving all scientific problems. And Euler, of course, had no clue that the Seven Bridges of Konigsberg puzzle will turn into a workhorse of the multi-billion dollar genome sequencing industry that has transformed biomedicine. And...
Where can you learn about other algorithmic challenges that often pop up in coding interviews, you ask? Well, of course you do. Well, just stay tuned for the next edition of Ace Your Next Coding Interview by Learning Algorithms series. Now, uh, go play outside or something. Grandpa has important matters to attend to. Ah, uh, yes. Where were we? Ooh. Go on. Happy learning. <laughs>